Highway 101 and Hi everyone, so we're in a town called Coos Bay as we're driving down the Pacific Highway. Now, it's got a lovely boardwalk here and by all account there's a load of festivals that go on throughout August. We're not entirely sure we're going to catch any of them. One of the things we did notice though is that there, it's very difficult to have a somewhere to stay with an RV park. Um, last night we tried to wing it a little bit and parked near the airport. We got <laughs> we got moved on um, and we ended up sort of like scratching around trying to find somewhere to stay. Now you can stay at the casino, but they want to charge you $25 just to dry park, don't they? Yeah. With no facilities. Anyway, we did find a little bit of parking, didn't we? We did. Near the bridge. Um, it was okay. We were worried that we were going to get moved on. We didn't get moved on. It was not too bad, actually, was it's it, in right. the end? No, there were toilets and there was bins there, so we could put our rubbish away. So Further along the boardwalk, and there is a, an old tugboat, isn't there, Gary? Yeah. And it's, um, it's from 1924, so it's nearly 100 years old already, isn't it? There's some really interesting um, signs around here, but they are absolutely heaving with bird poo, so I'm going nowhere near them. But interestingly, Coos Bay's more than a port, it's also an estuary. And an estuary is a place where fresh and salt water meet. And also, the US Army play a big part in this, don't they? Yeah, since 1879, they've been making sure it's kept navigable for um, deep draft boats. And what, how do they do that? Uh, by dredging. To keep it nice so, and deep? Yeah. Yeah, because apparently there are more than 250 deep draft ships calling at the Port of Coos every year. Coming into Bandon on the Sea. It's really nice looking. Absolutely fascinating. So the tiger rockfish, how long do you say it lives for, Gary? 100 years. And the whole point of this beautiful, like massive monument of a tiger rockfish is to show that your choices matter. Plastics and styrofoam live in the environment longer than a tiger rockfish who lives for 100 years. This is brilliant. We love this place already. I think Bandon might be coming my favorite place in Oregon these sculptures really fascinating and brilliant but they're really educational as well so this one's called steve the weedy sea dragon and by all accounts i didn't realize this but females lay their eggs on the male's what it's called a brood right on his tail and you'll see they've replicated it with all the plastics and he then carries the eggs until they're ready to be hatched that's amazing isn't it and this is completely made out of waste plastic I love this initiative and it's by an organisation called washtoshore.org, Art to Save the Sea. Fantastic. I'm just talking to Ellie from Wash to Shore. So where does most of the plastic come from, Ellie? Um, all of our plastics come off Oregon's coast and in local beaches and other organisations do the beach cleanups and give us their plastics. Oh really? Yeah. And who makes all these beautiful sculptures? Is it a is it a mixture of lots of different people? Yeah, we have a whole team on Wash to Shore that works yeah. on these and it takes quite a while to do these like this. Um, Steve, our weedy sea dragon, took about nine months. So. Nine months? Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's amazing. Yeah. I love the attention to detail yeah. about the eggs on his tail yeah. as well. Yeah. It's brilliant. I'm going to have a look around. You've got quite a few of these, haven't you? Yeah, we do. We have about 80 to 100. Um, wow. But they travel all over the US, so yeah, yeah only a few here. But, yeah. Oh, I think this is great. And how can people get in touch if they wanted to donate to the organization? Uh, can, well, right here we have something where you can write down your name and email, but you can contact Donna from Wash to Shore yeah. and let her know if you have any questions or want to help out. So That's lovely. Thank you very much, You're Ellie. Welcome. Amazing. Hanging from the ceiling, they've got some water bottle jellyfish. They're absolutely beautiful as well, and what a great way to get the message across about plastics in the sea. What a brilliant idea, so that kids don't um, risk their lives. They've got a free loaning life jacket station. You just borrow it and bring it back. I can't believe it, there is actually a picnic shelter in here, and it's dedicated to Commissioner James Fleck. Um, but look at all of this. It's amazing carved wood inside here. Anybody can come in here and take shelter, have a picnic. It's enormous. This is a beautiful place, isn't it, Gary? It is. What you got there? It's a bin. Is it a bin? How cool is that? These are all over in this little town of Bandon. The tsunami evacuation map. 
it's much more organised than we've seen anywhere. And, and most places have got a good evacuation map, haven't they, Gary, or, or a plan? They've got the signs, haven't they? Yeah, with, with sort of arrows saying kind of run or walk or drive this way. Yeah. I've not seen anything quite as elaborate as this, though. This is, this is what we're used to seeing. We've seen loads of these. Um, it's tsunami evacuation route. It's terrifying, isn't it, really? We just left the lovely Bandon and we're heading to a dragonfly farm. Um, we don't know if they actually farm dragonflies. I don't think... Oh, do you think they do? Well, I'll be picking wings out my teeth all night if they are. I don't think they like for food. Um, well, I hope not. I don't want to eat any. Anyway, so guess what, though? We're going to be their very first Harvest Host guest. They're a new Harvest Hoster. Uh, so we shall see what it's like and uh, hopefully get, be able to give them a lovely review afterwards because... Uh, very often when you start something that you're really reliant on your first review aren't you yeah. so and what, what a little joy for us to be the first people there it's just off the 101 we raise plants not dragonflies <laughs> well that answers that question <laughs> just gonna park her up got a lovely little spot just there under that tree we're gonna get um, a lovely local honey um, as our product and and the the quid pro quo is you spend sort of 20 30 dollars on the products but there is some gorgeous crystals hanging. I mean, I love this one. The products are really lovely. They've got my favorite things like crystals in just gorgeous little items, homemade, wonderful, lovely bits and pieces. Look at the gardens. There's a massive trees here, but they've got some really fun, sort of um, those things where you put your head through. These ones are like a sunflower. It's gorgeous. I've just realised that the uh, fire pit is made out of some sort of almost like tank tracks or something. How clever is that? We've come out for a quick walk to Port Orford Lifeboat Station. Honestly, if you're passing by this place, the views are amazing, aren't they, Gary? Fantastic. Aren't they? I'm going to show you them now. I can't believe it. They're just gorgeous. <laughs> California gets all the credit, but Oregon is really beautiful. He's so right. This is my favorite, favorite view in Oregon. Look at this gorgeous little passage. It's almost like a secret passage. To come through, this is the gorgeous view. You're welcome by. Sign here saying trail. Please use designated trails. Obviously, you'd be crazy to try and go down that way. Break your bloody neck. You should come in. There's um, a, a few items you can buy, and actually, it's a free museum, but there is a little donation box. So, it'd be nice if you gave a little donation if you came in. And we're just going to have a quick look now, but there's a shipwreck room, so I'm really excited. Oh my gosh, look, this is the shipwreck room. All of these things in this room were found in a shipwreck. This is a massive wheel, steering wheel. Um, it says, please turn the wheel slowly. Oh, you're allowed to do it. Oh, it still goes round. That was found on a beach in Florence in Oregon in 1930. Oh, this old desk was salvaged from the Joan of Arc. It looks like in mint condition as well. It was originally a four bunk bedroom. It's actually a massive room and it's got such a pretty outlook as well. Wedding dress from around 1905 to 1910, and it's got an 18 inch waist. Oh my goodness, I think that might be the measurement of like a thigh of mine or something. Hey, I don't really know what to make of these toilets. So, there's a rope here to stop you going in. Um, wasn't keen to go in anyway, but look how close they are. Imagine having like your business in the mornings or whatever right that close to somebody. That's I don't like that. I would, oh no. Then there's the showers opposite. One's not got a shower curtain, but you know what? If you've seen everybody there, there ain't much you're going to see in here, is there? I just brought Gary up to these toilets because I can't believe it. What do you make of it, Gary? Well, you know, it's a tight knit crew, clearly. <laughs> oh, yeah, but. Well, they were all male, weren't they? There was no females in the crew, so. It's, uh, it's, it's if not like I'm not being funny. I wouldn't not. be able to sit next to any female <laughs> myself, personally. I wouldn't like, sit next to anyone. Well, you know what those blokes are like. 
<laughs> you literally <laughs> wouldn't be able... Would you be able to go? <laughs> yes, of course you Gosh, would. I'd be constipated forever. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just learned a really interesting story about this um, submarine here, this Japanese submarine. Basically, in the early 40s, a Japanese submarine came to the coast here. So obviously, across the Pacific... Instead of torpedoes in its torpedo tubes, it had an aeroplane, a float plane. And what they did was they took it out, they built it, and that aeroplane flew over here and tried to set fire to the forest by dropping incendiary bombs. It was chased back to the submarine, but, it, but the, 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 um, the US Air Force lost it. It got put back into the submarine and they sank a few ships around here and then went back. But what's a really interesting point is, at the end of the war, about eight years after the war, the pilot of that plane came back here and presented his samurai sword as an act of atonement to the local town for doing oh. what he did. How fascinating is that? Highway 101. And we've we've noticed uh, a couple of police vehicles and uh, red light vehicles going ahead. And this is what we're just faced with. Just ahead of us, there seems to be a plume of smoke coming from somewhere. I don't know if that's a forest fire or just a terrible accident. But this police guy is obviously making his way down vehicle by vehicle um, to let people know what's going on. The policeman's going to tell that guy not to walk up there. There's obviously something quite serious. That smoke plume is huge. And it's climbing up the hill, so that's... And there's a house up there as well, look. On, oh, on gosh, I hope they're all right. I hope that. And to put some context into it, it's really windy here. I don't know if you can see the grass here is really blowing in the wind. Um, but it's very windy at the moment. The van is rocking with the wind. Um, so I'm hoping it isn't a wildfire because that is going to spread very, very rapidly. It's been told there is fire on both sides of the road. So Gary and I are going to try and turn around. Lots of people are now turning around here. This is a real nightmare. Let's let the officer, he's just trying to inform everybody as he goes along. Nothing quite like a bit of adversity to bring everybody together. So last night when we were all sort of pushed back because of the fire, we ended up meeting up with a good few people. I made everybody a chilli and we sat round having, having a lovely evening meal last night and a few drinks. And then this morning, we're sort of sharing breakfast duties and I'm on pancakes. So I've got one of those American mixed ones that are quite easy with a bit of milk and a bit of egg. Um, so I'm making a bit of pancakes and, um, and the guy's making scrambled egg and bacon. So it's really quite, it's turned out quite nicely, actually. Um, it's a bit of a secret location. Um, we've been asked not to share the location because you're not really allowed to stay here. But we've been really super lucky. I just feel like this has been the most amazing night that was so unexpected. So sometimes out of everything that happens, it's wrong. Something really fantastic happens. So hang in there. It's the breakfast view as I'm cooking. It's my finished products. I'm quite happy with my little stacks of pancakes. That's the last one in the pan. Mm, I wonder what my American people think. What do you think, guys? What, these all right? The first one was a right nightmare. Thank you.